Lauren Yeager works with found objects. They're mostly items people toss to the curb, but she gives them new life in her Midtown studio in Cleveland. To try to add value back to that item is like a way of recovering it um, from, I mean, at least in our community or in Cleveland, like everything is on the curb is going to a landfill right now. Yeager has been focused on creating sculptures with what she finds on the street for the past several years, something that sparked while attending the Cleveland Institute of Art. On a recent afternoon, Yeager stacked together old plastic planters and boxes, moving pieces around until she either likes the way they come together or they begin to take the shape of classical or modern sculptures. I usually will start with maybe a you know, a more familiar approach and just say like, oh, I, you know, this thing could be a base for something, what could go on it, and kind of put similar forms together. If I have like an object that's kind of a cube or square format, then I'll look for other similar shapes and things. Many of the pieces Jaeger works with are made of plastic, a material she says is prevalent on street curbs. And plastic is not sought out like old furniture or scrap metal. You know, these objects, specifically the plastic ones, are going to last for thousands of years. So, you know, is there a way, like, perhaps through sculpture to repurpose them and, and add value back to these objects rather than us just, you know, piling them up somewhere? I mean, there's not really a solution and practice to recycle them right now. Sometimes you even think about the sculptures as like a temporary way of storing the plastic until there is something else that can be done to, you know, repurpose or reuse the stuff. While she's not necessarily seeking to make statements through her pieces, Jaeger says she is interested in how different people respond to them. It kind of allows me to present like the sculptures and the components as more of like data rather than my, you know, my aesthetic or my opinion about, you know, what I should be representing in art. It's more like it's a consensus among our entire community. Like I'm using the stuff that we like as a community have produced and trying to find a way to incorporate, you know, your objects into the art rather than you know, just creating with my own vision. In Cleveland Heights, artist Corey Slauson considers the latest news, culture, and nature in her mixed media work. You know, something will happen in the world. I'll end up processing it in a different, in different ways, right? I might, it might be an image that I'd print out from the internet or it might come, come to me in a magazine or a, a piece of journalism. Whatever that is, it's going to be connected to something that I possibly have from earlier versions of my own work. My goal is for this to kind of mimic the surface of a piece of paper. Slauson fuses together different symbols, shapes, and colors, making connections that might not always be considered. For instance, her recent series, Endangered, calls attention to animal life threatened or extinct and the interconnected actions and priorities of humans. I have many, many tens of almost hundreds of collages that I built using a combination of internet, National G, um, you know, photos of animals, photos of endangered species, looking up exactly why they were endangered. Modern luxuries, such as jewelry, make their way into her collages, questioning what cultures value and the effects on the natural world. It's beyond just habitat loss and, and, and the other human activities that cause these endangers. What is it about the climate changing that really is, is, is present here? And so the other piece of these you know, finding the animals, right, or the, the plants, animals, all of the organisms that were involved in that. And then taking Martha Stewart, Vogue, Bazaar, Mary Claire, just magazines that present beautiful things 
nature in a beautiful but really manicured really controlled really um it's not an environment it's not an ecosystem the way that they're presented and i juxtaposed these animals with these these environments that are 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 concocted by humans Slauson says her art moved into exploration of social issues while she was pursuing her master's at Kent State, where she also now teaches. Through art, she questions systems and cultural norms. Who gets to enjoy a, a nice environment? Who gets to ruin it? Um, you know, and who ends up paying the, pri the price for that um, and the sort of justice of it all? Just last year, Slauson teamed with others on a production called Feast. It combined her visual art with dance while collectively critiquing the overconsumption of the Gilded Age and colonialism. Her work often evolves from prior creations as she considers present day issues and realities. And what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm basically taking so many of the elements from Endangered, from Feast, and literally cutting them up. I have a whole drawer I could show you of just chopped up Xerox copies that um, I end up screen printing or, you know, putting through the, the printmaking process, um, reprinting them, relayering, kind of just, so the drawings I made over the, the winter were just me processing them really kind of emotionally and visually and, and um, um, with color, with, with really formal elements as an emotional response to being in a pretty bleak winter with a lot of isolation. While she can't say exactly where she's headed with her latest work, she's once again very much processing life and art simultaneously in her studio. I'm working on them in these very sort of technical ways, almost as if like the technique is what can make it make sense for me. but. I don't have answers up there.